Josh Davis is with us and he's from right up the street in Buford, Georgia, Clipper Pros. He does a lot of clipper blade sharpening and is very knowledgeable about all things to do with clipper blades and clippers, uh, clipper repair. And I think you're going to enjoy what he has to teach us today. Hello, this is Josh from Clipper Pros. Uh, my wife and I own Clipper Pros in uh, Buford, Georgia. We uh, do clipper repair, blade sharpening, shear sharpening. Uh, we also do some knives, axes, hatchets, uh, lawnmower blades occasionally. Um, if we'd been meeting in person, I was scheduled to teach uh, Introduction to Clipper Blade Sharpening. Uh, it would have been, I guess, about a three-hour course, um, lots of hands-on, and now that we're meeting virtually, uh, I decided that a, a quick down and dirty introduction to clipper blade sharpening would probably do more damage than good. Uh, there are quite a few good programs out there if you're interested in learning properly how to sharpen clipper blades. Uh, Bonica uh, does a one day course. Clipper Pros, we have a two day course. We cover theory cords, blade drives, and sharpening. Uh, and part of the theory is what I'm going to teach you here tonight. Um, also, the Edge Pro has an excellent course. Uh, so just do some research, reach out. Uh, there are plenty of places where you can learn hands-on how to sharpen clipper blades, and you will be better off than me giving you a quick uh, video online. But what I wanted to talk to you tonight uh, or today about is a little bit of sharpening theory. Um, and it's understanding clipper blades as part of a system. Too many times sharpeners uh, view the clipper blades as a unique uh, entity all by itself. And they don't think of it as part of a larger system. So I'm hoping <clears throat> that everybody... Uh, people that are interested in clipper blade sharpening all the way up to those who have been sharpening clipper blades for decades could potentially learn from this. Uh, most of your people who have been doing this for decades have probably do this naturally, uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight. It's just that maybe we can help uh, bring it to the forefront of your mind and make it a little more part of your uh, thought process. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to cover, uh, we're going to define a system. We're going to discuss what makes up a system that includes clipper blades. We're going to talk about the different types of systems that include clipper blades. And we're going to talk about sharpening to the system. So the first thing we need to do is define what a system is. Uh, we talk about that a lot. There's a clipper blade sharpening system. Um, and what it is, according to dictionary.com, is a system is an assemblage or combination of things or, or parts forming a complex or unitary whole. So basically, it's a bunch of parts that make up something that is a whole. Um, that is a system. And clipper blades are part of a system. They are not a standalone item. So with that in mind, what makes up a system that includes clipper blades? So let's start with the most simple part. It is the comb, which is the large part of the blade that does not move, and the cutter, which is the small blade that moves very rapidly left and right. Every clipper blade system has these two parts. Then we have stability. Uh, the clip, every clipper blade, the comb has to be held stationary. It's generally done with screws, uh, either on the blade itself. The detachable blades are a, an enclosed system all by itself. Um, adjustable clippers, the stationary blade or the comb is held stationary by screws while the cutter is loose and, and able to move freely. Then that comes the tension, the tension that places the proper amount of pressure onto the cutter to make sure that it can move freely enough, but still remain in contact with the comb, which allows it to cut the hair or the fur or, or whatever it is that 
you're wanting to cut with the clipper blade. Then you have the drive. What is it that's driving that clipper blade? Um, is the drive in good shape? Then it, the drive is connected to the motor. The motor is very important. Uh, depending on what's being cut, the motor may not be strong enough for that particular item. Again, that we'll, we'll talk about that with sharpening uh, to the system. The power, the power cord or, or the battery. Uh, is it in good shape? That's part of the system that is driving that clipper blade. Then we have guards. Are there guards involved? If a barber wants his um, <clears throat> Andis Master zero gapped, he's not going to be able to use guards with pushing the cutter as far forward as possible. It's going to cut the back of the guard. It's going to shoot it off. It's going to chip teeth. Same thing when you're talking about a grooming uh, dog groomer. They like to use guards on their 30s. We set the 30 cutter back further because they're using the guards, which means that that cutter will hit the back of the guard if the blade is too far forward. But if they're not using guards on their 30s, then we don't need to do that. But that's understanding the system. The user themselves is part of the system. Is this a professional? Is this somebody who's learning? Is this somebody who's been cutting hair or cutting fur for two decades? The user is a huge part of the system. And the usage and design of the clipper. There are certain companies which shall remain nameless at this time who like to put human clippers with the adjustable lever into a box with animals on them, dogs in particular, and sell them at local pet places and claim that these are good for cutting all kinds of dogs. They generally have the biggest, fuzziest sheep dogs they can find on them. They're human clippers, and when you see them, you recognize them. But is this individual trying to use a human clipper on, a, on an animal? Um, the usage and design of the clipper is part of the system. And that's about as far as we're going to go here, but we could go even further. We could go into um, where the blades are made, where the clipper is made. Uh, you can take this very, very far. But for our purposes, that's as far as we need to go. So all that makes up the system. It's not just a cutter and a comb and slap it on the wheel, sharpen it, throw it together, and off the person goes. You have to know what the system is and each piece of the system in order to sharpen that blade properly. So the different types of systems that include clipper blades, I've discussed them a little bit. You've got the grooming systems, which are designed for dogs, cats, uh, horses, um, You've got the large animal clippers, which again could be your horses. You got sheep. Uh, Bonnie, I think, sharpens blades for a guy once a year that does llamas out or something like that out in the middle of her parking lot. You have to understand the system. So you've got the large animal blades. You've got the large animal clippers. You've got um, a farmer who shears his sheep once a year with these things. Again, part of your system. Uh, your professional groomers, your at-home groomers. For, uh, by groomer, I mean dog groomers, uh, cats, pets. Um, uh, we just got a clipper in from a zoo. And I got on the phone with the, uh, the vet. And I said, okay, well, what are you using this for? And she's a, it's a, a cordless. And she wanted to keep it cordless, even though the batteries are running out on her pretty quick and uh, the purpose is when she goes out into the field with what she called more geriatric patients um, she needs to be able to shave portions of their body to to give them shots or, or whatever it is she's doing so in order to make sure that her clipper was running properly and sharpened properly i needed to understand how she was using it you have your barbers you have your stylists 
Barbers, uh, at least nowadays for the most part, are primarily using clippers more than shears. Excuse me. Your stylist, for the most part, on the other hand, are using mostly shears and not that many clippers. So understanding exactly how often those clippers are being used and how often um, they're doing proper maintenance on them and oiling them is part of the system. I hope this is kind of getting getting your thoughts rolling there on some of your customers or your potential customers and how they're taking care of their system. So sharpening to the system, I've hit on that a little bit. Um, a lot of people, when they first get started with clipper blades, they assume that every clipper blade is sharp and the same. That's not true. Uh, an adjustable clipper blade, the comb is sharpened flat, or as flat as we can get it, and the cutter is sharpened with the hollow grind in it. That allows the cutter to maintain the same type of position on the comb as it moves back and forth. That's that adjustable lever. Same thing holds true for the, the five-in-ones by wall. That is an adjustable clipper blade doesn't have a lever per se on the side of the clipper like a barber clipper does like the Andis master but the blade and concept is the same it's adjustable it has five different positions when you sharpen a detachable clipper blade when you reassemble it and give it the proper setback which is the distance that the cutter needs to be set back from the end of the comb then that position stays fixed provided you put in the screws the right way so understand that that system both blades can be hollow ground because they're not moving back and forth and once that cutter is in the proper position it's going to stay in the proper position barring the user dropping it or throwing it or a dog kicking it off the table or whatever um your trimmers, uh, and this T outliner is the most popular trimmer. We see it all the time. That blade does not move, but you're going to hear things in reference to that blade that you need to understand. There's language that barbers are using to describe the system that they want that clipper to be, or that trimmer to be part of. Generally speaking, they're going to come in and tell you they want it one of two ways. They're going to tell you they want it um, zero gapped, which means there is no setback. The, um, the comb and the cutter or the ends are exactly in the same spot. And so the question out of your my, mouth needs to be, are you heavy or light handed? I've had barbers almost scalp their clients because I, they asked for zero gapped and they decided that they wanted to just press down as hard as they could. Another thing you'll hear is people come in, and these are particularly your uh, at home. So these people own, um, say, the Andis Outliner for uh, home use. They'll line themselves up, or they'll shave their heads or their beard, and they're going to tell you they want it as sharp as possible. They don't mean for you to sharpen the blade, the comb, and the cutter as sharp as possible. They want that, but what they're talking about is zero gap. And again, you need to ask them and make sure and go, if you press too hard, you're going to cut yourself. And generally speaking, they're going to tell you, okay, back it off just a little. So understand the system. And again, the user and the usage is part of that system. So ask them, what are you using this for? Ask your groomers, do you use guards on your 30s? 99% of them are going to say yes. So even if you don't ask that question, you can go ahead and assume and set that cutter back a little bit just in case. So I hope that we have spurred some thought that maybe um, for you sharpeners who have been doing this for decades, that maybe this brought a little bit of your process to the forefront. Um, sharpening is not for a non-thinker. Um, sharpening clipper blades, sharpening shears, sharpening knives, sharpening axes, all of them are part of a system. They're different systems, 
but you need to understand the system for every single item that you sharpen and you have to be a thinker you have to think to ask the right questions you have to think that when you're sharpening and something's not quite right you have to think through that what part of the system is not working right is the tension too tight is the tension too loose is the blade drive busted is the motor weak because the set between the armature and the actual field is off sharpening is a thinking person's job this is not mindless you must think about what you're doing how you're doing it what the system is and if you do that you will be successful above and beyond what most sharpeners out there are think about it think about what you have learned in your training think about what you've learned in experience and hopefully this will give you something to think about too so again um, i'm gonna what we talked about tonight was we defined a system so that we understood exactly what we were all talking about we talked about what makes up a system that includes the clipper blades as part of the system and not a standalone item. We talked about the different types of systems that include clipper blades. And we talked about sharpening to the system and not just sharpening clipper blades. Again, my name is Josh Davis. Uh, my wife and I own Clipper Pros in Buford, Georgia. Be happy to hear from any of you. We're happy to talk to anybody anytime. Give us a call at the shop or drop us a message on Facebook. Um, be happy to talk to you. Um, since this was pre recorded, I'm hoping that uh, we got to have some conversation while the video was going. Um, and I wish you all the best. Uh, there's plenty of business out there for all of us, but I tell you, Strive to be the best you can because you will work yourself out of a job if you don't think about what you're doing and you just go out there and start ruining people's stuff. Y'all have a great day. It's been a pleasure and I hope to talk to you soon. Hey, Josh, that was really interesting. That helps me a lot. Um, some of the things I think I knew, but it really, you helped put it together in a nutshell to help make it clear in my mind. So I appreciate what you had to share and thank you so much. And anyone that's interested in training with Josh, um, please get in touch with him or get in touch with us and we can send you to him. So thank you again, Josh. <laughs>